Hey everybody, this is Stuart with Wine on the Dime, and today I'm reviewing another Costco Kirkland Signature Wine. This is the 2019 Kirkland Signature Napa Valley Red Blend. It is 14.5% alcohol by volume, and it is a blend of, hold on, 66% Cabernet Sauvignon, 26% Merlot, 3% Petit Verdot, 3% Malbec, 3% Cabernet Franc. So, if you're kind of a wino, like I am, and you've done some basic research, this is essentially a classic left bank Bordeaux blend that is made in Napa. So I'm kind of expecting it to have some similar characteristics, not totally all there, but some similar characteristics to a left bank Bordeaux. So let's take a look at it. Don't need foil cutters. Most of the time they don't actually like heat shrink those enough to actually make it worth your while using a foil cutter. Just grab it, twist it and move on. All right, so before you get to the color, this cork has a ton of color in that. Look at that. Look at that. Tons of color in that cork. Nice deep tones. But how does it translate to the actual wine itself? You are a, ooh, this is difficult because you still have some purple notes. I'm gonna go ahead and give you a medium purple. No artifacts, no cloudiness. All right, so on the nose, it smells like, it actually smells like a left bank Bordeaux. That's nice, so I'm getting a little bit of black cherry and getting a little bit of black, like a black currant type note. There's a touch of raspberry. There's also a little bit of, there's a little bit of dark chocolate, touch of black pepper. There's also a hint of blueberry. That, that blueberry could be coming from the Cabernet Franc or it could be coming from the Petit Verdot, probably the Petit Verdot. There's also a nice amount of like a red plum. A little bit more secondary is coming out, so I'm getting like this little sweet hint of vanilla, just a little bit. But the thing I'm very happy about is that black pepper is starting to develop more uh, as you kind of let it go out. It's blending in with the alcohol, so you kind of give it like a peppery alcohol type note. But the alcohol is actually fairly well integrated, so that's nice. The other thing that I'm, I'm really enjoying with this is that the secondary is noticeable. So there's a little bit of like a, like a cinnamon, like a touch of toasted coconut. So it makes me wonder if this is like a, an American French hybrid barrel that was used because you're getting a little bit of the secondary from both types of oak. There's also a little bit of smoke in here as well. As I smell a little bit more, that raspberry is almost like a candied raspberry. Yeah, anyway, so how does it taste? Okay, so full body medium alcohol, high tannin. But the tannins aren't overly coarse, but they're not weak. Like they have, they have some hefty body to them. It's a little bit like sandpaper in a way, but like high, what is it? High grit or low grit? Whatever's the most, more coarse sandpaper. It's more like that. Um, that's the type of effect it gives you on your tongue and on the rest of your mouth. But like I said, it's not, they're not weak, but they're not like killing you either, because they're there, they're noticeable, they kind of go away. This so far has had a pretty, pretty long finish on it. I'm gonna have to actually just sit here for a minute or however long it takes until this is over and then I'll skip ahead and let you know how long it was. All right, so I timed it, 56 seconds. 56 seconds according to my, uh, my clock on my camera. So you're four seconds away from what my minimum threshold is for a long finish. I may or may not hold that against you whenever we get into the blick. However though, everything is just very balanced. The fruit's very balanced, the alcohol is very balanced, acid, medium plus acid on there. Um, the intensity on the nose, medium plus intensity on the nose, medium plus intensity on the palate, everything matches. I knock Napa a lot, I do. Uh, I, I feel like for a long time, they were just trying to make everything as powerful as possible. Um, so their shards were over oaked, uh, they were over ripe, they were over alcoholed. Uh, a lot of their reds were the same way. Um, they would just barrel the hell out of them in terms of secondary and not really let the fruit be the expression. This wine is not like that. This wine has a lot of the balance and the contrasting flavors on the palate that you would hope for out of a left bank Bordeaux. But it's also something that I could see as a solo drinker. I would, I would enjoy a glass of this on its own I don't feel like I need food. With a lot of Bordeaux, I feel like it needs food. A lot of old world wines kind of scream that food pairing because the wines are typically made for the food that's within the region to pair with it. This, this could do well on its own. 
but how well does it rate? Let's get to the blick. So in terms of balance, I have no complaints whatsoever. I love the balance of this wine. Everything works. Uh, it's balanced between the nose and the palate. It's balanced between all the elements within the body. No complaints, full point. Length, 56 seconds. Four seconds shy. You know what? For once, I'm actually gonna throw you a bone here, California. I'm gonna give you a full point. Intensity, medium plus on the nose, medium plus on the palate, half a point. And in terms of complexity, you are a good breadth of primary elements. You have a good breadth of secondary elements. I'm not getting any age. I shouldn't expect age on this wine because it's 2019. It's very, very new, especially for a red. So I'm gonna give you a full point for your age, but here's the deal. I'm doing that only because I expect no age and I expect there to be balance between primary and secondary and you give me a lot of secondary, but it's very controlled. You give me a lot of primary and it's very nice for the age of the wine. So this is the only reason I'm giving you a full point because normally I require tertiary for there to be another half point there, but because you're giving so much nice balanced secondary and so much awesome primary, I'm gonna go ahead and break my own rule for this once and go ahead and give you another full point. So in the end, that's three and a half points. Now, I'm not going to break this rule. The rule that I have is that you must get all four points to be a great wine. This wine is just some aging away from being great. And I never thought I would say that about a Costco branded wine. The Kirkland Signature wine. I never thought, I, like I knew some of them would be good. Maybe some of them would be very good. I did not anticipate that this wine would be as good as it is. I'm, I'm like, I'm kind of wanting to just go to the store and buy another case of just this and age it and just pop them open maybe once or twice a year for the next six years. No, not even that. I'll probably wait on it three or four years and then I might pop one open every year for a while until they get good. I mean, this is a wine that is cheap. It's really good for what you're getting now. And I feel like it will be great as it has time to age as long as it can preserve some of that balance. It can preserve a reasonable amount of that acid. And as it develops, that tertiary is going to develop, but you're also going to get a little bit more pronounced in nose and more complexity on the nose and the palate because of that. I'm really, really happy with this purchase. Anyway, this has been Stuart with Wine on the Dime. If you liked today's video, please like, subscribe, and comment. Have you had the 2019 Kirkland Signature Costco Napa Valley Red Wine Blend, which is basically a left bank Bordeaux made in Napa? If you have, I'll leave <laughs> three to one. If you have, leave a comment below and I'll see you all again soon with another episode from Wine on the Dime. In the meantime, I am literally gonna kick back on this couch and just have another glass of wine. That's, that's the beauty of having a couch in your studio. I'll see you later.